We see how we treat the water, but how do we make sure it's of a good enough quality to send out to our customers? Let's talk about it. Hello and welcome back to The Science Behind with me, Guy, and today I've got my colleague Dan with me. Hi, Dan. Hi, Guy. Thanks for having me. Oh, thanks for joining us. Dan, what do you do for Yacht Water? So, I'm a comms and engagement advisor, which means my role consists of trying to find new and exciting ways of letting customers know about all the good things that we do, whether that's uh, our investment work to reduce storm overflow discharges, or the work that we're doing to tackle leakage, or just any of the good news that we do. Perfect. And Dan, what are we doing today on The Science Behind? So, today we're going to be discussing all things water quality. We're going to be having a chat with our water quality scientist Beth who is going to tell us basically how we treat Yorkshire's water. Perfect, let's go and have a look. So I'm here now with Beth. Beth, welcome back to The Science Behind. Something a little bit different for you today, uh, taking on the role of one of our experts, talking all about water quality. Uh, do you want to tell our viewers a little bit about what you do? Yes, thank you for having me back. So I'm a clean water quality scientist. We look at looking at the water quality from raw, like these storage reservoirs we have here, to the tap to ensure that the customer has clean, safe drinking water. Fantastic, and uh, what are we going to look at today? I'll be taking you on a typical day as a water quality scientist, so if you come with me, I'll show you what we're going to do. We're going to head down and get some samples from throughout the process. We'll then take them back to the lab. So we're going to do a bit of benchtop analysis, uh, just to check that the water quality is all optimised on site. And then later this afternoon, we're going to head across to the kitchen to do a little bit of customer queries. Fantastic, sounds fascinating. So we're here at the raw water inlet at Elvington. We're going to be taking some samples back into the lab um, that we will be testing to make sure that the water quality is all as it should be and in line with the monitors that we have here continuously reading. And what kind of things are you looking for when you're looking at these samples in the lab? So the samples that we're taking today and taking back to the lab on site, we're testing for turbidity, pH, colour, things like that, that all help us uh, to determine chemical optimisation and that the treatment is working effectively. Cool, what are we going to look at next? Let's head across to the action flows and the rest of the treatment process. Well, we're here now at the river. How do different raw water sources affect the way we treat the water? So we've got three main types of raw water sources in Yorkshire water. We've got rivers, reservoirs and boreholes. Boreholes are your groundwater, so they more commonly require a lot less treatment. Uh, whereas when you're looking at rivers and reservoirs, you're looking at the different kinds of pH that can determine different coagulants that are used throughout the process to treat the water. So we're here in the water quality lab. Let's go see what my colleague Zarka is up to. Cool. So we brought this sample back to the lab for testing. Uh, do you want to talk us through a little bit about what we're looking for? Yes, yeah, so we'll be looking for pH, um, UV, turbidity and the CETA potential. So the colour is measured by UV and it measures the organics in the water. The turbidity is the total suspended solids in the water. The pH is a measure of alkalinity or acidity in the water. And all these um, parameters help us determine the quality of the raw water. So earlier we mentioned zeta potential. Can you tell me a little bit more about that please? So this fancy machine we have here measures zeta potential. So your zeta potential is the electronic charge of the water. Uh, so it's measuring the ions in the water. A raw water typically has anywhere between minus 15 and minus 25 millivolts. The coagulant that we add helps bring that water up and we want it closer to minus 8 to plus 3. So what's a coagulant? So a coagulant is a little bit like a binding agent. The uh, positive charge of the coagulant reacts with the negative charge of the water and it helps stick it together like, uh, think of magnets. Uh, they stick together, clump together, and the density becomes greater than the water, and it helps separate any of those nasties, like the debris, the sediment, from the water uh, to help it then throughout the process. One of the questions that a lot of our customers ask is around fluoride in the water. Is that something that we add? No, so we as a company do not add any fluoride to the water. If it is there, it's naturally occurring. Another thing we get asked about is the presence of cryptosporidium in the water. Uh, can you tell us about the processes we have in place to make sure that that doesn't happen? We have a rigorous sampling procedure to ensure that we are continuously monitoring at all of our treatment works outlets. 
Uh, we also do work like this in the labs to make sure that our treatment is optimised to mitigate anything getting through the process. That's really reassuring to know. Um, so what's next? So on the topic of customers, let's go deal with some customer queries that we get in distribution. So we've come to one of our kitchens on site where unfortunately we can't go into an actual customer's property. I've got a customer taste and order query. Um, would you like to have a taste? Sure, let's have a go. Okay, so yeah, there's something definitely not right there. Uh, it almost tastes like, uh, almost like what you get in a swimming pool. Like if you're going underwater and you kind of get that sort of chlorine-y almost. Yeah. Can't really describe it. I uh, wouldn't recommend. So what you actually just tasted was a replica of a customer sample um, that we've reconstructed. Um, basically, what you would typically be expecting to taste is mouthwash tastes for some people, antiseptic and a disinfectant type taste, like you said. Um, this is all indicative of phenolics. Okay, uh, so, so what are phenolics? Yes, yeah, so phenolics are caused by the material that's used in unapproved fittings. So this is an example of an unapproved flexi hose. Now, if you half that, you see that inner lining there. So the chlorines in the water um, can react with the chemicals used in the lining. So this is a sample taken from a customer's property um, and they were complaining about bits in their water. Um, on further investigation, we actually found that that is the inner lining of a hose. Um, so what you can do instead is use approved fittings. Um, you can tell approved fittings from a stamped mark on them. Um, we've got one here, this is a RAS one. What is biofilm? Biofilms are the accumulation of bacteria that's naturally present in the environment. They like a damp area uh, to grow in, so obviously taps, uh, fittings that aren't approved are a great place for them to multiply. They can look like little bits in the water, they're usually slimy, they can be pink or black as we've got here. Uh, they're more of a nuisance than health impacting. A good way to mitigate them is, like we said, using approved appliances and fittings, but also good tap hygiene also reduces them. What can customers do then if they, uh, if they think they've got an issue? Customers can know that we have robust sampling procedures in place. We are also strictly regulated by the DWI, Drinking Water Inspectorate. If customers do have any queries on their water quality, they can head over to the website and find out the next steps on what to do if they have a water quality issue. So it was great meeting up with Beth and Zarka over at Elvington. I'm now back here with Katie. Katie, welcome back to The Science Behind. Thanks. So I'm going to head over to Huddersfield to see how we test the water at Service Reservoir. So I've come over here to Huddersfield to meet Jimmy. Jimmy, what do you do for Yorkshire Water? The weekend quantity for the water quality sampling team. And what are we going to look at today? So today we are at uh, Windy End Service Reservoir and I'll show you how we take a sample and also do a taste and order. Why have you brought me to this one in particular? This is one of my favourite sites because uh, there are there are a couple of alpacas in the field next to the site. Normally when you when you come onto site they try to get into the reservoir but you have to like fend them off by locking the gate again. Would, would you like to go and have a look? Absolutely. What are we going to be looking at when we're in here? Good question. This is where we take the regulatory sample for this service res reservoir. What would you be looking for when you're taking samples? So then Katie, we sample at the water treatment works, but we also sample at the service reservoirs. This is to ensure that the water is tested and it's fit for purpose and, it's, and it's, so it gives the customers more reassurance. 
How different is testing at a water treatment works compared to a service reservoir? It's exactly the same sampling procedure at a water treatment works as you would take at a service reservoir. Could you show me the sampling procedure? So this is the sample tap here. It is one of the few sites that, that, that has actually got a pump on it because it's a fairly deep reservoir. So I'll just turn the pump on. Okay, once the pump's run for three minutes, we would then take a physical sample and we'd also take chlorine samples. And then we would, we would have to flame the tap prior to taking the bacteria sample. We flame the tap purely so that we can kill any bacteria off that, that is actually on, on the tap. Once, once the tap uh, hisses and steams, you know that all the water's boil, boiled off and uh, everything should be ready to take the bacteria sample. So Jimmy, thanks for showing me around and showing me the alpacas and how we do a test on the surface reservoir. Thank you Katie. Uh, yeah, as I said, this is one of my favourite sites uh, and it's been a pleasure. That was the science behind water quality sampling. Katie, thanks for joining us again. Thanks for having me. Yeah, it's been really great to go around the region, look at the different forms of water quality sampling that we do. Yeah, and it's such a shame that Dan couldn't join us here at the Alpacas. I know, he's really missed out today. And please don't forget to like the video. Subscribe to the channel. And let us know in the comment section below if you've got any questions. And well, I'll see you on the next one. Bye.